How are you? I am oh, doing. Look at these. Oh, thank Holy you. I made a very. Christ on a, I'm very grateful that you are affirming these because oh, I was deciding God. between bare leg or boot, and it feels like boot was the choice for you. But there's something about a boot that's a little more, I mean, most boots are not like fit over you like a skin. That and is that, true. I mean, that's a different kind of boot. Yeah, these are stand-up boots. They're not walk-around boots. Right. Yeah, we're not going for a walk around your property after this. This is as far as we're going to go. But in the meantime, it's very nice. <laughs> but uh, I could certainly, I know your background a little bit. I'm, I think I could say this to you. But I'm you know, also Canadian, and Canadians oh, are very strict about shoes in the house. I just had William Shatner here. You so, know, if so, we can just act as if that happened, it was the most phenomenal date I've ever seen in my life. Me and him? Yes. <laughs> you were mirroring each other, your body language, you were affirming each other, you negged each other. It was like such <laughs> magic to watch. I thought to oh, myself, thank you. if you were sexually attracted to him, would that not be your ideal long-term partner? Uh, <laughs> that's a lot to bite off there, uh, Shan. Uh, I, no, I, I, I mean, I, I can't even imagine William Shatner in that role in my life, but <laughs> men can love each other for sure. And it's funny the way, you know, he and I, it's interesting, you know, you circle someone for years, decades, sort of know them. You know, I always say in Hollywood, people ask, they think you're, you know, friends with everybody in show business. I'm always like, well, there's friends and there's friendly. Yes. A friend is someone who I purposely make plans with. I have their phone number. I can confide in. And then there's friendly. We have been friendly and now we're friends. You sat on his lap out the gate. <laughs> So that just sent a very different message. Maybe the tone that you set, but it was just like well, a I knew he very... didn't want to get up. So I'm trying to be, I'm always a, trying to be a good host, you know. I mean, I have many flaws. I can't accuse me of ever being, like, great at commitment or anything like that. But I think I'm a, a good friend and a good host. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> but I think he was so curious, and you were curious in return. You mm -hmm. learned from each other. Mm -hmm. You had disagreements, but they were civil. I You're feel like right. in the end, it was just a very beautiful yes. date. Because it's, you know, and we talked about age in there. And there is something about being older enough to, like, have confidence in so many things that you don't when you're young. Like... I'm just going to be honest with this person. I'm going to trust. It's not going to be offensive to them. In fact, they're actually going to be complimented. You called him beefy in the first few minutes. That was a bold move. Beefy is not, I don't. <laughs> That's an egg. <laughs> well, I, I feel like when you're 90, it's, it's good to be beefy. I think so, too. You know, what you don't want to be is skeletal. He looked buttery to me. That's when I saw him, and I mentioned well, that, that what's, what's it's the that? lighting is very flattering in here, and I was like, he looks very buttery. What is buttery? You know, smooth, kind of like, you know, gelato when you go and you see them I, and they're scooping it. For 90? He looked, yeah, he looks scoopable. I just got must like, sleep in Sephora. Yeah. <laughs> He does look phenomenal. We got to go to Target together. We got a man girl. crush on him. I loved, I loved it. And it was fascinating, too, to me because um, I... When you're a sexologist, when you study sex, you have to do something every few years called a SAR, which is Sexual Attitude Reassessment. And it's three intensive days where essentially you watch various kinds of porn, for lack of a better term. You watch all these different erotic materials so that your sensitivity is increased so that if you tell me that you like your dick stomped on with high heels and that's what you like about these boots. I don't. Well, if you did, I wouldn't have a averse reaction. We'd be like, right. I'd be like, okay. I'd have a reverse reaction. Like, wow, that hurts my dick. Well, it depends on who's stomping and how they stomp. No, I don't think it depends on that at all. I think anytime you're getting your dick stomped on, it's bad. The people who I've seen had it stomped on before look like they were enjoying it. And I okay. think that there's well, a if there's an even distribution, and they actually don't do with the point. It's more of like the pressure itself. So I guard my dick like you love those boots. Okay, okay? my <laughs> dick is not getting stomped on. I don't care how hot you are. Well, you, you can are. stomp on these boots. That's a, I don't okay. guard them that much. You are not stomping on my dick. But in that course that I just did, and I did it a couple months ago, we had a uh, pup play that I watched and a section on aging and sex. So it was fascinating to watch that because oh. I was like, oh, I've just had references for these. Pup play. Now, both of us were a little confused out of our depth there, pup play, why don't you 
hit me with what that's really all about. When you see it, it makes perfect sense. Because, do you like play fighting in sex? No. Never? I don't do anything kinky in sex, and I don't miss it. You know, I don't want to choke you. I don't want to slap you. I don't want to come on your face. Doesn't anybody just fuck anymore? Well, pup play is on the opposite end of the spectrum of everything you just suggested. Right. So I don't want to do that either. Okay. I, don't, I don't want to dress up as a squid. I don't want to be a rabbit. You know, I just want to fuck. I, why is, if you're doing it right, I feel like you don't need all these bells and whistles. And also, they never change anything. I mean, no matter how many wigs you put on, you know, it's, it's the same dude and the same woman. You know, it, it's like the wig, you can't fool me with the wig. It'd be great. Or if you be a pirate, or like, tonight I'll be the hooker and you be Charlie Sheen. You know, whatever it is that you think you can pull off. It's like you're kidding yourself, I think. But maybe that, But maybe I'm limited. I don't think, I mean, there's something beautiful about just appreciating. I always say this about um, when I met my now husband, I was looking for a fuck buddy. And I was auditioning dudes to see, like, who did I feel had it. And there was something about him. Like in an actual office? More or less. I mean, it was my studio apartment at the time. Right. So it was my office, <laughs> technically, like, and my kitchen, in, and my and bathroom. It was and everything. You'd, you'd, you'd look at their headshot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you'd be like, special skills, come on. No, legit. I'd just play Beyonce. I'd wear a sports bra. I'd wear track pants. I'd have dudes come over. We'd make out. And i just kind of get a vibe, usually. I wish I'd got that casting call. It was a good time in my life. Um, and what I liked about him and why he ended up becoming my fuck buddy is he was fingering me and... The look on his face when he was doing it was like, you know, flow. It was like a painter. So An you, artist. Yeah. An artist. I always say it's a, you're painting or conducting a symphony that no one else will ever hear. And if it's good, it, never, it doesn't really sound like any other symphony that's ever been performed because it should be, I mean, the act should be an artistic expression and like there should definitely be no planning like my friend uh, carol leifer great comedian uh she used to have this great bit about married sex she said it's kind of like a a cha-cha you know i do this to you then you do this to me <laughs> then i do this to you then you do th and that's what sex i think often devolves into after you've been with someone for a while and that's what you want to avoid i think is you know and, of course, that's where drugs come in. But that's no, why I agree kids, with you. I didn't mean you that. didn't mean that. No. It's, a, it's clover cigarette. That's the correct term, right? It's, it's a clove cigarette. It okay, is. that was new for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I, what, I, I, what I will affirm what you were saying in that if you are authentic, it's different every time, right? Because I'm right. responding to and mood, if, my day. Right, and if you're actually into the person still. Yes. You know, I mean, you, you know, unfortunately, passion dies in most relationships. I mean, people have all these different methods. We're just talking about wigs and shit to like, you know, basically throw a lifesaver to this drowning part of the relationship, right? I mean, it's drowning, it's, it's dying. And like, oh, maybe if I throw at the wig or whatever the fuck you're gonna do. But it's very hard to arrest that, uh, you know, evolution toward less pa less spontaneity and less like spark that makes you have that great perform that symphony that's ever been done before and 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 wind up doing the you do this to me and I do yes. this to you because I always say there's only so many fucks in the can. I don't know. It could be five. It could be five hundred. Do you mean be, in a lifespan or in a, with any one person? There's only so many fucks in the can, and then. Come on, I know there's one more in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're doing. I, and and uh, I don't know if anyone can beat that spread. I know we have many ways of trying, and uh, I wish you luck. I think I know you have a, what do you have? You're, you're a, not a thruple, but an open. Yes. Well, open is another way of saying, you know, we're not, yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's certainly one way to, <laughs> to keep the uh, interest higher i think it definitely is that for me but i think that when sex becomes more than just a way to get off and it becomes a place of freedom like this is a space we're so domesticated right the way that we're sitting right now the way that we're talking you know we're not if 
if you said to me, my back hurts, I couldn't just go over there and start rubbing your back, right? There's all these rules for how we're supposed to behave. So you have this one place that you're- I just blew Shatner. <laughs> you, it wasn't, if that was how you blow somebody, that's why you never had homosexual experience because that was no good. Um, you're right. <laughs> That, if it's the space that you can be free and authentic and make crazy sounds and those desires that you've had that you've been repressing all day long, you can let it out with this person. If it becomes a space for that, that's where the wigs and the puppy, the pup play and the howling make perfect sense. Okay. Have I you mean, ever howled before? Howled? Uh, <laughs> you mean like, ooh? Yes. Like the, the dog, like the dogs yes. do when the fire engine goes by? Yes. No, I don't feel like I've ever made that sound or know why I would. Well, you did well just now. Oh, <laughs> I, I love it. When the, when dogs do that to a siren, I just think it's the most adorable thing. I've howled before when I was sad. So when I watched the pup play. Like that? Well, from the depths of my soul. I can't okay. perform it right now. I'm not an actor. I'm, but it would be like, you know, like that deep howl, that animalistic howl. So when I watched the pup play, you know, erotic video, and they were howling together during sex, that was like, I get that. I get why somebody would be into oh, that. Oh, they were both howling. Yes. Or you could just howl by yourself if that was your preference. But I think, again, like I feel it kind like of... that takes a lot of energy away from the parts that really feel good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, oh, but like, that's not really... It's, how is that adding to like that, you know, what's going on in my balls. Are you I, silent? I just don't, Are you silent? No, not silent. And it's interesting you bring that up because back to the issue of like when relationships start dying. Get into that place. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, it's the bottom of the ketchup yeah. bottle or the yeah. Pringles can. That's what you're, yeah, that's where <laughs> the, the one, um, is that like when I'm turned on, I can't stop words coming out of my mouth. And when I'm not, I can't make them come out of my mouth. In other words, it's almost involuntary. Authentic, that's great. That's, you can't get much more authentic than involuntary. Yes. There are times when I wished I could have made words come out of my mouth because I thought, oh, this isn't good. I'm looking, it's just not, you know, it's not communi communicating. I, I, I think, it's so great when you can communicate. Am in I decoding multiple dirty ways. talk? What happened? Dirty talk? Is that what you're saying? More no, like no, 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 not dirty talk. I mean, real talk. Real talk to, not like, oh, baby, baby, you know, and you don't need to tell me I have a big dick or whatever. Yeah, I don't need to hear well, it. I need an example because if you don't howl, no, I'm you just, make sounds, but you talk. Talk, but again, if it's completely authentic and happening in the moment and inspired, and that symphony, how could I tell you what it is now? I don't know. I'd have to be having sex with you to to okay. approximate it. I can't. <laughs> that wasn't my way. Of, okay. I promise. Maybe if we were I promise fucking that, right I now, promise, I might I come promise to promise that was not what that was about. <laughs> I'm just telling you, that's the truth. So I can't give you an example. But it, whatever it is, it, it's like what I'm actually feeling at the moment. Is that a genuine response? You really cannot remember what you say or what you sound like during sex oh, at I, all. Oh, I didn't say that exactly. I said I can't do it. I'm not going to do it now because it, it's like, yeah, I actually can't. You're right. I can't. I can't think of an example because it's happening in the moment. One thing I like about sex is that mostly I'm too analytical and everything is happening in my head. And if I'm turned on and, you know, <laughs> high on liquor, <laughs> the legal drug that I do, um, then I'm sort of out of my head. Uh, and that's like a great relief for me. It's, it's very hard to achieve that. But, you know, again, it's not, if it's planned or in any way uh, known beforehand what's going to happen, then it's no good. And yeah. it's hard to maintain that. I mean, you know, again, it's very easy to slide into... I do this to you, and you do this to me. But everybody's trying to get to that place that you're at, which I'd like to be curious about when you got there. Because to get to that place where you're being genuinely authentic and you're expressing yourself and you're letting all your humanity out and receiving pleasure and giving pleasure, and right. you're so in flow that you don't know what the fuck happened afterwards. Right. That's where everyone's trying to get. Some people need to put on a wig to get there. Some right. people <laughs> need to pretend they're a puppy to get right. there, right? So... 
that's the, what I mean. Like, sex positivity isn't like, oh, there's a certain good way of having sex. It's like getting to a place where you get to be in full, authentic expression of yourself as a sexual being, right. and you give space for others. That's it, and you've achieved that. You just didn't need. I did. I mean, like, stuff. I'm look. I'm not hip with sex at all because, like, the thing you're doing with open, I, that could I could never. It's like very hard to like. Uh, I mean, threesomes, I th always thought were like better for the ego than the dick. Uh, they reminded me, listen to me, I'm, only, I'm remembering all my old comic buddies' bits, but Paul Reiser, he <laughs> used to have a bit where he talked about showering with someone. Not with two people, just with one person. And he was like, someone's not getting enough water. <laughs> <laughs> and I always felt with a threesome, someone's not getting enough dick, you know? And there's no way to sort of like get around that. And I'm sure there are people hipper than me, but it's like, I don't want to, I, I, it's just too much work. It's just, it's, and sex is so brilliantly designed as a one-on-one -on -one that to, it's just so complicated and, you know, it's hard for one person not to get jealous of, of you know, all they have to do is see you, like, look into someone's eyes who you're fucking, which is, you know, if you're not going to do that, what's the point of fucking? Although there are people who, plenty of people who fuck without looking into each other's eyes. Well, anything They're that you're not in married pr people. Right. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> anything you're not in practice of doing is going to seem arduous and hard, and, like, anything that you're not in flow of, right, it takes thought process. So your idea of giving fellatio is very different from what it's actually like, but if you were more in practice and more in flow then it wouldn't feel like, what do I have to do next? Because of my knees, I have to do this. So if you're repeatedly having threesomes or multiple partners, then of course, then you'd become but second you? nature. No, we're oh, not. Oh, I yeah. thought you were in an open relationship. Well, here's the thing. Our definition of open essentially is we don't police each other's desire. I don't police his sexual needs. He doesn't police mine. And as a result of that, we have the option. Um, we've been married for three years now. We have a kid. I'm pregnant again. So we haven't engaged in a while. But even at a certain point in our marriage, when we were first getting together, we kept trying new sexual things. He said to me, like, hey, you know, it's a long life. We don't have to try to jam in every fetish, right. every toy, every tool. We'll wait. So open to me is a concept and a way of life that if I was propositioned by the right person, if I had an incredible date night like you do with William Shatner, <laughs> I might be like, let's <laughs> ask him if he's down. This feels fluid so, and natural. Speaking of jamming in. Okay. <laughs> don't even know I said jam in, but let's go. <laughs> so you're pregnant? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, like, are you going to have sex throughout the pregnancy? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's number two for me, so I've, I've been doing this. It's so, yeah, absolutely. Two. Yeah. Oh, I thought you, okay. Um, I thought you said number two. I thought you meant you were doing it in the ass. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> okay. So... <gasps> And he likes it during pregnancy, too? This actually was a place of contention because we talk about our relationship a lot together. And we um, I love that about my partner, that we get to have that experience. So we were talking uh, when I was in my third trimester last pregnancy. And I asked him, I was like, hey, like, are you, like, what's going on? Like, you're not really initiating anymore. I'm like, is your sex drive low? Because I went through low sex drive in first trimester. I totally get it. Like, is your sex drive low? Right. Or is your drive to have sex with me low? And he's like, oh, my drive to have sex with you is low. My sex drive is the same. And I'm like, keep a straight face because be inviting for this discussion. It's an honest partner you it got. It is a very honest partner that I have. I mean, th and that's uh, not to interrupt your story, but I guess I did. But that's such an interesting choice to make in a partner. Like, I like honesty, but it can sting. It can definitely sting. But it feels great when you hear a really great if compliment. You're the, the right person, the, a strong person, takes the honesty, and you, and it's going to be a better relationship. So, um, so that's good that you're the strong person who can do that. Yeah, because then I asked. I said, "Well, what are you doing?" And he said, "I'm I masturbate. I watch porn." And I said, "Oh, well, like, I why didn't you tell me that? Like, why didn't you communicate right. that with me?" And he's like, "It's kind of a private thing that I do." And so, that was a tough conversation to so have. But it's an open relationship. But when he can't have sex with you, he masturbates. This is a <laughs> shitty open relationship. You know, this is actually, you know, it's a place of, I'll actually say this though too, because I'm pregnant again. In first trimester, I was so sick, I didn't want to have sex. And so I asked him, I was like, Jay, because on top of that, we have a baby. I was like, I beg you to get a fuck buddy. Because I don't even want the responsibility wow. or the thought of the responsibility of that. But this is where societal conditioning comes into play so much as well, where he's like, I can't do that while you're pregnant because I would feel I mean, away. The whole concept of fuck buddy 
I find a little skeevy because not that it can't happen, but sex engenders feelings. It's like it's pretending that we can fuck without feelings, you know? And there are only some people who can do that. They're called men. (laughs) No. Um, And many men can't. Yes. I can't. Yes. You know, it's it, it engenders feelings. Yes. I mean, it's... So, like, a fuck buddy, it's, like, so easy. It's so funny the way, you know, women are always like, oh, just go out. Like, like it's so easy. Like, a man, they, they, women think that every other woman is a giant slut. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, like, every other woman in the world is just giving it up so easy. And I just wanted to say to them, you're like, none of you are easy. <laughs> you know, none of you are easy. Well, no people are easy in general, but I, obviously you don't have experience being intimate with people with penises. So in your no, experience, and women are. that I right. don't have. But speaking yes. of penises, I got to ask, you said you can have sex while you're pregnant. Yes. So, oh God, I don't want to be indelicate, but like the baby's in there growing. Yes. And then this fucking dingus is like banging right up against where he's trying to get some sleep. Is that... You're being real generous to my man right now, and he would love you for it. You, but, I mean, certainly the the little thing in there, it's got to feel some, if there's if there's some prick, dick, cock, slung, schmuck, a pitas, a pecker, a dipstick, a dingus, a Samson, a tool, something coming in, he's got to, like, feel some vibration or, like, some, you know, it's on the, right. It's like in an apartment where you can feel people right on the other side of the wall. Well, you can I empathize. can tell they're cooking brisket. <laughs> this kid is going to know that the thing is trying to bang on the wall. Hey, keep it down in there, baby. <laughs> That's what it's like. It's like the neighbor, but it's a dick. This is exactly why he did not want to have sex with me in the third trimester. So you are voicing exactly what he pictured, you know, to me. And he also as well, because I'm so accustomed to the belly, so I would, we would be getting like, you know, kind of intimate in the shower. We're also not shower sex people, but we'll get like it started in the shower. So we're getting to pop it in the shower and then I would be like, oh, the baby moved. And then that would take him out. But for me, it's a fact of life. It's a part of my body. But for him, it became exactly how you just described. But no, there's no science to say that the baby's <laughs> sleep is being disrupted or there's issues right. or going to have a hearing problem right. on one ear. Yeah. Well. <laughs> it's just there's nothing like that. If anything, it's beneficial. No, I, w- I just think if, if in case there is cognitive something going on when the baby is in the womb, and I guess there is some to some degree, I mean, people fucking play Mozart like in front of the pregnant belly because they think the baby is going to, I don't know, be smarter smarter or something. Yeah. So there obviously is this idea that the baby has some, some kind of mental <laughs> powers going on in there. I'm just saying maybe it would, it could disturb him. It's a disturbing thought that you know, a giant <laughs> ramrod. <laughs> well, you're, you're coming... taking your adult brain and putting it onto this little tiny fetus. Yeah, that's true. He and doesn't know what it they is. They don't know. They just know he that just there's... Knows it's um, There's feel-good hormones somebody happening. Somebody in 3B. Keep the it blood down! The flow <laughs> is increasing. <laughs> Mom's hey. happy. It, that's what they know. Right. Yeah. So when do you... You certainly don't look pregnant yet, boy. August. I got some time, yeah. August. Mm. Mm. When was, when's your birthday? My birthday is January. Happy birthday. Does, does that, do you believe in? I do not, no. Oh, I don't either. Great. Great, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a firm, actually, as I had a child, it became more of a dislike for me because people start to tell you about your kid that you just met two seconds ago. It's, so It's absolutely impossible, I find, to find anyone under 30 who does not believe in astrology. But I can't judge too much because when I was under 30, I did. Oh, did you? Well, I certainly did not believe it. I remember... I met some people who were, like, very serious about it. Like, I, you know, they do charts for a living. And they did my official chart. You know, they're, oh, it's not just about your sun sign. We have to, like, find out what all the planets were at the very moment you were born. I remember telling them it was exactly at 1032 at night. And, you know, they said, well, you're exactly on the cusp of Capricorn and Aquarius. And, like, you know, they're... And then, of course, it's suggestibility, you know. It's like, oh, you know. Have you ever wanted something you couldn't have? Yes. <laughs> Why, yes, I, I have. I, you know, it's like, yes. or whatever, you you could fit it in. You know, this is, uh, beware of problems this month. I do have problems. <laughs> this month. <laughs> you know? 
I don't know. I appreciate and, it because it gives people the language to describe intimate parts of themselves, and we don't get that anywhere else. So I like meeting people who are into astrology because often they might have the language and the tools to say like specific things about themselves. But I think that there's better tools out there. Um, and yeah, so as somebody who's a non-believer, I had my chart read for the first time, which was uh, the perfect non-believer experience I had. Because the person who read my chart was like, this isn't crazy. I've never even met somebody whose chart is so specific to their birthday. You were actually destined to be a sex educator, which I do feel that way about myself. You were destined to be an intimacy educator. Your Venus was in Mercury and your salad was on right. the dressing. Everything was working. <laughs> and then I'm listening. I let my eyes scroll up to the top of the page. And I was like, wrong birthday. And I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. It was perfect. I love that. Yeah. But not to knock it because I think it's great. So, so what is a sex educator? What do you do all day? Well, I'm a public facing sex educator. So, a what happened? Public facing, which public means I'm facing. like Martha Stewart for sex, right? So, I'm not in somebody's. There's a difference between a sex a great educator. Job. It's a wonderful job. Do you remember Dr. Ruth? Is it of you too course. young? Are you too young? No. This is my literal bio is that I'm Dr. Ruth meets right. Rihanna. A hot, young Dr. Ruth. Yeah. Man, what a great bio to write for yourself. Thank you. Because there's, there's always a need for a Dr. Ruth. Yes. There was also a Dr. Joyce Brothers. Do you know who that is? Mm -mm. No. Google her. I Get out Google your her. magic light box. Okay. <laughs> Not right now. I don't have any uh, pockets, so that would be not okay, possible. Right. Um, but when you get home, Dr. Joyce, Joyce Brothers. Because she was a little before Dr. Ruth, but she was this... Again, they always have these people with, you know, they're like perfectly clinical. That's what makes them allow allow them to say things about sex that, back, especially back then, was not what we were accustomed to see on TV. TV was very tame. Yeah. Before, I mean, you couldn't say ass. I remember Johnny Carson and Ed McMahon trying to like, you know, work around not the word ass. You couldn't say fart. I said sucks, like the airport sucks <laughs> in 1983, and it was like a scandal. And then he was saying it two days later. I broke the barrier on the oh, word wow. sucks. Oh, wow. Look at you, trendsetter. Yeah, exactly. I know. What a flex. <laughs> right, it's a flex. <laughs> I said sucks on TV. But it's true. That's how tame it was. But, you know, when you had a doctor, doctor, you know, uh, Dr. Joyce Brothers, and, you know, she could say, well, if the man's penis is in your mouth, it's like otherwise they'd, like, fucking lose their fucking. <laughs> Somebody said that, but they could get away with it. And Dr. Joyce Brothers was a little before Dr. Ruth, but it was the same bitch. She was a little more broad. It wasn't just sex. Was she part of your, like, 11 p.m. wank bank TV? She was just on every show. Like, talk shows need fucking bodies. Mm -hmm. And you got to fill seats. And, you know, as I've known for 30 years now booking shows, um, people, not everyone you want that week is available. You can't subpoena people to come on your show. <laughs> you know. You don't get William Shatner all the time. You, they have to want to do it. Yes. Um, I'm glad you want to do it. No, I mean, this was one of those things where I was like, I had to like, Google. I'm like, is Bill going down? Like, how am I getting booked on this? Like, that's that's me having not enough self-confidence. Isn't but it fun to be here? It is incredible it's to be really, here. I've been it's a, so different than my, I mean, I, I would never, ever, as long as they want me, leave my real show because that's, to me, that's the real show. We are brought to you by SignalWire. SignalWire powers the future of cloud communications. Built by the original geeks of software-defined telecom, their mission is to make it simple for anyone with a great idea to build whatever they can imagine. The OGs at SignalWire have spent decades solving the most complex problems in communications. Whether it is voice, messaging, or video, SignalWire has the APIs and SDKs to create unique and intelligent communications experiences from within existing applications or websites. Join the millions of other customers like Amazon, Ring, and Home Depot who are using SignalWire to build the communication experiences of the future. Visit SignalWire.com random to sign up for a free account. Go to SignalWire.com random and build what's next in real-time communication. Go to signalwire.com slash random. That's signalwire.com slash random. Dr. Joyce Brothers, she was very like uh, Dr. Ruth, except she was not foreign or German or four foot tall. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ruth, of all the people to be talking about sex, this midget German with the heavy accent, it was hysterical. But Dr. Brothers was like very clinical, 
And one of her big things was, uh, you know, within seven seconds whether you want to have sex with some, or, or you know, and I was that would, even just to say that on TV then was pretty outrageous. But you know, I always used to think it takes you seven. <laughs> <laughs> seven it's one you guys talked about that a right lot. yeah just, but isn't you it just i mean i think it's different for women yeah but it, as far as like you know that i want to fuck you is different than i i'm going to like you know suddenly you see someone oh i'd like to fuck you but i could see you're a psycho mm. <laughs> and, <laughs> and trouble and a million other things and you know discretion is the better that takes the seven better part of valor <laughs> exactly but i could see you know physically you know that um, I don't think it takes seven seconds. Well, I think, I mean, that's enough time to get... For a woman, it could take seven years. You need two instances of eye contact, right? And then maybe an opportunity to, like, take in something about that person's, in, you know, be beyond their looks. So their demeanor, Especially their swag. Especially a woman. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I always think the only way to have a good time is talk first, sex second, eat third. Can never eat before sex. Okay. And Can't can eat never, during sex. And you can you can never eat before sex. And you can never have sex without a good long talk first. Because and like now that I'm this age, or like I'm sort of like become more like a woman. I like that too. Do you identify you know? with the term sapiosexual? No, because that no, that because that's someone who can only have sex with someone who is, um, you know, intellectual. Well, that, it's someone that you do, feel but, like you had a William Shatner conversation with that you're like, I feel turned no, on here. But no, that's not necessary. But to like actually, you know, have a long, in depth conversation with someone who you know may not have my life experiences or be quite my age. Uh, you can still have, feel like you, you know, you just have to get to a place where you feel like, oh, where there is a mental connection going on. That's when the pants come off. Mm -hmm. Before that, it matter. It just matter how physically attractive a person is on either side. I don't think it works. Do you think it's the that only took, way it works? That took time of testing out many physically attractive people. That you're like, oh, I couldn't of talk course. to them. Of course, I, right. I mean, I didn't even, I didn't understand that even when I was fifty. I don't think because you became famous in your thirties. Did you go through your whole phase late, or did you go through it in I, your early twenties and college? I do year? everything late because I'm a Capricorn. Okay. <laughs> 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 um, I do everything late. Everything comes to me late. Um, like, I was super shy and, like, terrible. It, just to talk to a girl was difficult when I was younger. And, I mean, you would never guess I would have gone into show business, let alone be, like, sitting here with you, just kicking it and, you know, so, like, I don't know, just relaxed. That certainly would not characterize me as a child or an adolescent. I was ostracized by the other kids a lot. I, I always had a knot in my stomach going to school. I couldn't make friends easily. Even though you were funny since 10? Yeah, but like funny, you have to like, you'd have to know me first kind of funny, you know? I mean, I had friends going up, but like maybe one or two at a time at most. I remember the first two years of college, I really didn't have friends. I had one guy who lived in a dorm uh, he's still a friend of mine, but I didn't see him that much. He had dorm life. Uh, I'm not dorm, I'm sorry, frat. I was in a dorm. And I wasn't a frat kind of guy. I mean, I would sometimes, he'd say, I would call him up. Can I come over on the weekend, you know, just to do something? I used to dread the weekend because at least during the week, I had a reason not to be popular. I was working on schoolwork during the weekend, you know, and this is college when you yes. should be, like, having the best Your whole time. Face. Yeah, so, like, I made up for my bad adolescence <laughs> ever since, really. I mean, I always say, I went to Freak Nick 93 and I stayed till 2000, <laughs> 2007. <laughs> and during that time, did you learn that uh, sex without 
mental compatibility to some degree. It's it, just not meaningful. Again, it took forever. I mean, when it there was many times when it not many times actually a few times when it happened when I was with someone who I should have been with and who I was in love with. And, you know, when it was a real relationship. And then, yes, I did experience that. Well, this is why you don't get down with fuck buddies. See, but, I'm not like that. I actually feel very the opposite, that I, when I have a fuck buddy, I mean, I'm very scientific about it, but a big thing is I don't want to have an intimate conversation with you. I don't want to get to know you aside from really? how can we have a pleasurable experience together. Wow. And I think what turns me on yeah, that is people, different from me. Yeah, I don't, I'm not really turned on through conversation. I love it. And I think that's a different type of intimacy that I really do enjoy. And I'm glad I'm with a romantic partner who doesn't stifle that part of myself either because I love going out for dinner with dudes who I think are just super dope and super cool. I just want to talk and like get to know. But the dude that I might just want to have sex with is just the one who just says that nasty shit that there's something about it that just sparks this carnal well, you can, response. But, I mean, one leads into the other. I mean, having that, again, to have a woman feel, to feel intimate with her and her feel intimate with me mentally, you know, like we just found out a lot about each other and, you know, we expressed some things that like, I, what, what's going on with you? I care about you at, at least this much, you know. Did you mean that? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm saying in general. Okay, person. sorry. I don't want to yeah. misread things. Uh, stop <laughs> fantasizing about me. But to, to do that, uh, then that is what, you know, makes the panties wet. Mm -hmm. Your panties. <laughs> <laughs> well, in theory, this is like what is you your know, turn on trigger. That's the thing that would get you. No, I'm saying it makes a woman's pant. I don't wear panties. What are well, you talking I know about? You, I'm not sure if you do or don't, but I'm saying what gets you <laughs> turned on. You do not. <laughs> no, but it also it does turn me on. And um, I mean, her being turned on turns me on. Somebody and posed this question like, to me. I want to ask you because we were talking about. What's more of a turn on than a pussy that's wet? You know, because it's like, oh, you do like me. <laughs> But I guess in your and, position, yeah, it's got to be more than is, that. And this is proof. You know, in basketball, they say, ball don't lie. Yeah. Pussy don't lie. <laughs> like, you could say you don't like me, but come on. I can feel it. But, I mean, that's, you know, come on. You can't, nothing, you know, that would turn me on. Like, oh, man, you can't lie. You, you like From me. a gynecological perspective, they could have an infection. or An be, infection? Could be. I'm, I'm oh, saying there's various God. reasons not, why there could be okay. excessive it's, moisture. I'm just saying that that's one. It's probably not that. Okay, it's probably not it's that. It's probably not an infection. Thanks for putting that in okay, my Okay, well, head. I'm just saying that like there's every time not I the <laughs> only indicator <laughs> that somebody is oh, into great. you. Well, but it is a good one. An erection again. So I want to ask you this great because you. <laughs> <laughs> we were having a discussion just because there's um, – you're in the podcast realm now. So there is this sector of male podcasters who are voice or talking aloud, maybe for the first time. And men don't traditionally talk about sex and relationships, but now they have these podcasts where they're doing so. And then as a result, they're saying a lot of unpopular things. So there's a lot of talk around body count and, what, what? you know, body count. What you know, body woman, count? How many bodies a woman has had? How many sexual partners? That's great that you don't know that. It's a huge thing. Like, that's, wait, that's a word now? Body count? Body count, yeah. And it means how many sexual partners you have? Yes. Meaning it's good or bad? It's a bad thing if you're a woman to have a high body count. That's a, as it always has been. It always has been women were judged. Bad with a high count, and men, oh, I got a bunch of them. You know, that's, you know, Wilt Chamberlain, 20,000, and, you know, that, that. So nothing's different now. Okay, so you gave it that's a name, body count. That's part of the problem, count. though, that nothing is different, that we have this sexual liberation movement right. happening for women, and then many right. men just Because have, our biology doesn't change. No, your brains can change. We not, have plasticity. Not from you could the beginning fix of it. You not could work for, on it. I'm sorry, not from the beginning of time. Women's brains are not that different. They do not, like Tinder is not what they want. They do not want to just hook up mostly. Yes. They, they are, uh, have to have an, um, look at any fucking dating show or TV show that's about, it's still the same shit. They could have been on in the 50s. It's all the same culture though. So we can't differentiate between, is that a socialization? Women or want is that a man. I want a man. And they don't want other chicks like 
taking their man or looking at their man or their man leaving them. They want a man and it to be their fucking man. Okay, so here's something I'm okay, going to ask you. Okay, that's most women. But that's most westernized women who have been raised by their mother and their grandmother and their great-grandmother to believe that that's this not, is what it is. That's not western. So, that's just... that's. But no, there are different cultures where women are more sexual, where women are more dominant, where they... Really? Yes. Where women are not jealous and want one man and basically want to nest with one man and don't want other bitches like... Of course there are other cultures. Where, where are these cultures? We know different religions <laughs> where you're allowed to have multiple partners. Not or women. allowed because the men run the religion and they made that a law. The women didn't want it. You think the women want to wear the burqas not and those. be in a okay, harem? In you think the Mormon ones. women want to wear pioneer outfits and be with all the other women who have to service the old fuck who's the head of the There's cult? There's yoni pujas where you've got cultures that who? worship the vagina. Who? There's yoni pujas. What's yoni? I know that's a Hindu word. Yes, for vagina. Where are these many people? In this an Eastern practice. Okay. So I would I'm, say it's a niche practice. Okay, but what are the, here's the question <laughs> I, would, I was posed that I would like to get, ask you. Yes. So somebody said to me, if there are a hundred men that you are physically attracted to, how many of those would you have sex with? And Great question. It's a great question. For a woman. Right. And then I'm... I have to really think about that because no matter what number you gave me, okay. I'd I, pick one. I'm going to do a bit for you. I always I always call it on myself when I do a bit, but it, it's, to, it's too apropos not to do. Okay. And here's the bit. I've never known a woman who didn't have some version of the story where she met a guy, was introduced to a guy, Tinder or whatever, social media, and thought, oh, he's cute. Doesn't look like a psycho. It was very hopeful. Something would happen. And then they all have some version of, and then he opened his mouth, and I lost interest. Every woman has that story, and no man. <laughs> exactly. But you do. What are you talking about? No, but. We just had the discussion that you do have that experience. Yes, but um, it didn't, it came late in life. Okay. And it's also not Once quite, you deprogrammed yourself from socialization and decided not what you're told to like, but what you actually like that gets you to that authentic bomb sex that causes you to black out and forget what you said. I mean, it can be, I mean, <laughs> bomb sex. I think I'm going to put that on my license plate. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it has to be. A version of what we're doing now, or what I just did with William Shatner. Can I ask you that a question? A version reverse? of that. It is a connection that is going on between minds that then you can that then can move to a different space if it's appropriate. Now it is with Bill, not with you. Is it because I'm pregnant? You don't want to yes. knock on. Quite frankly, okay. yes. Okay, all right, because fair enough. I don't want to be that guy. Hey, <laughs> keep it down in there, baby. Is your sex drive low or is your drive to have sex with me low? It's neither. But this is awkward, Mrs. Robinson. Okay, sorry. Get okay. On to your, Let me get, ask this question. Get back to your point. <laughs> if there's a hundred women. Yes, a hundred men and for women. You, and as soon as the, my point of doing that bit was. To, to your point, as soon as, yes, 100 men you find all attractive, most women, like 92 of them would open their mouth and they'd be like, oh, fucking, I can't deal with this. My mother was the biggest fan of Robert Goulet. You don't know who he is, but he was this gorgeous French-Canadian singer, big star, 60s, 70s. And then he started to go on talk shows and she was like, Ugh. I'm over Robert Kulik <laughs> like, because he opened his mouth, and I love him, but he wasn't good on talk shows. Uh, anyway, that's it. but but men, no, you you put a hundred hot women, and they will find a way to get around the fact. But again, this is what I was, and that's why I feel like it's so good to stay single your whole life, at least in my life, because I wouldn't have gotten to that point if I had gotten married when I was 35. I would have never evolved to that because I would have been arrested into that thing with, you know, there were a great compensating reasons why that might be good for someone, but I would never have gotten to this point. And I'm really glad I did get to this point because mm -hmm. I feel like much more of a complete person. I, I literally, I've told you, I feel like more like a woman. 
<laughs> That's actually a beautiful place. That's a really beautiful this statement to me. This girl is a woman now. <laughs> Do you think that your mom, if given the opportunity to have oral sex performed on her from Robert Goulet, and that was it, she thinks she would turn that down even though he wasn't intellectually stimulating? That is such a great question. My father took her to see Robert Goulet what a great guy my father was, knowing that she had like what we would call now a screen crush um, at the Waldorf, I think, somewhere where he sang. It was an intimate setting. I mean, it was a crowd, but, and she sat in the front row and, you know, he was this matinee idol like Tom Jones. They used to throw the underwear at him and he kissed her in like on the cheek. This is something he did in the act. Whoever, whatever a ladies. a big deal. Would, she got picked. Well, she we, was pulling him. We, well, she was in the front row. He kissed the ladies in the front row on the cheek. Mm -hmm. It was just a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and we never let her live it down. And, you know, she you know, dined out on that for years. And But then I do remember that when she was like, he became a bigger star and was like on the talk show circuit. And I knew him in later years. I purposely befriended him so that, and I mean, I was a fan too, but okay. like so that my mother could meet him. And I remember I for her 75th birthday, I think it was, I flew her to Las Vegas before I could really afford it on a private jet. And we went to Robert Goulet's house. Wow. Yeah. And then? Well, <laughs> you know, like, this is why you shouldn't meet your idols. I think, I mean, he's a lovely, he was, was a lovely guy, but I think he still wanted to be adored by not the women my mother's age. You know, he didn't want, <laughs> in his mind, he was still Robert Goulet. <laughs> Viva <laughs> Las Vegas. So, you know, it was like, okay, I get it that the women who have aged with me love me in that way. But I want the 26-year-old over there. to. Was like, he giving her that feeling when she was there? I just think he, he <laughs> no, it, it wasn't like aimed at her. or. Oh. But it was just like. Yeah, there was some part of that that he was... He wasn't giving her kiss-in-the-cheek energy. <laughs> That's not <laughs> no, nice. It was, no, he was very nice. He was a great guy. But he just, you know, it's hard to be like a matinee idol and then be like, now you're just an older guy who women are not, like, fawning over. He didn't want... When, like, an older woman fawned over him, he wanted them... He wanted it to be a 26-year-old again. Mm -hmm. He didn't want the older ladies coming up to him, like... I love you. I was like, yeah, you have a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it wasn't, uh, you know, not that my mother was, <laughs> like she thought no, she was going to get laid. Gorgeous. I mean, he was well, married and, you know, the wife, her wife is such a wonderful woman. I still uh, keep in touch when I can. And, uh, but, you know, I mean, that's why it, they always say it's dangerous sometimes to meet your idols because, like, um, they can disappoint you and not be the, you know, or, or that you can meet them and they can surpass your expectations. So this goes to the point then, because your mom said previously that he wasn't intellectually stimulating enough, but she still went to this house you're, looking for kiss on the cheek energy. You're, you're right. Well, to be honest, I was the one who put it, she wouldn't have asked me. I set it up. Um, you may have a point though. I mean, I don't know because I can't see in my mother's mind, but I mean, Yes, I think when a woman has that uh, warm feeling in her loins. <laughs> the moist. Do women have loins? <laughs> I hope so. Um, yes, I think it never goes away to a certain degree. And, I mean, she was a widow at this point, mm -hmm. you know, so it wasn't like she was Game cheating. on. <laughs> Game on, exactly. Bring on Goulet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if ever I would leave you. That was his big song. He was in the show Camelot. I knew Viva Las Vegas, that that's one of the songs. I that's thought, Elvis. Okay, well, I that's do know Elvis. that. But he was, do you know the show Camelot? Have you heard of it? I've heard of it. Okay, they called the Kennedy administration Camelot because it was a show on at the same time, and it was about this sort of mythical, magical kingdom, and people who loved Kennedy used that as a metaphor. But really, it's King Arthur, and Camelot is a story. They made a movie of it with Richard Gere and Sean Connery, called First Night. And I'm sure you know the characters, like King Arthur, he's the fucking king. 
But in the play, in the musical that Robert Goulet was in, you know, he's older now. He's the king, to the point about Robert Goulet's age. Mm. Um, so, and the, the plot of the thing is that his wife, his younger wife, Guinevere, falls in love with the handsome, younger Sir Lancelot. Whenever he passed her, his front of his pants would advance a lot. That's a, <laughs> is that a, a real limerick that I show? Could, oh. could not resist. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a limerick. Somebody made that rhyme and they deserve credit. <laughs> the front of his pants would advance a lot. Come on, that's pretty fucking good. Any, anyway, so uh, that's the plot of the thing is that older man, wife, and then she falls in love with his good friend but much younger and Robert Goulet made his mark on Broadway in 1960 playing the young Lancelot. And then later in life, he toured as the king. Wow. Because now he was older. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Now so he was he, still getting young pussy? What are you talking about? But he didn't want to play the king. Oh, he wanted to play Lancelot. Lancelot. See, whereas in my life, it's the exact opposite. I was never suited to be Lancelot. I'm perfect as the king. I'm never, I never was a boyfriend, partly because of what we were talking about, you know, just so like mean understanding you're having, things that I didn't understand when I was younger. Are you having your best sex ever now? Let's, mom, I can't get too personal. We, what do you mean? That's a pretty, that's a pretty basic question. Within the past uh, 10 years. 10 so years. So uh, let, here, let's go through uh, the timeline. Uh, 20s uh, was a time uh, uh, of... Uh, uh, Nope. Depression, nope. not being cool enough to be invited anywhere. We didn't finish the story. On the weekends, you had one friend who you'd go to just to have somewhere to be. Oh, and then so bad. it got better Well, when you turned. Oh, well, anytime after that, anytime having no friends. I mean, my first two years of college, no, no real friends except for that one guy, but I didn't see him a lot, and certainly no girls. I mean, I'm talking about O oh, for laid i think the first two years because like first of all I, I i was a furious masturbator you know i would rather masturbate and plot how to get women than you know lower my standards and i certainly uh, <laughs> lived up to that credo um and you know masturbated a lot and plotted a lot and uh you know that was kind of my mo but no, I mean, it was, then I moved to New York to start my career in comedy. That was almost just as bad because New York, you know how you vibe with certain cities? Yes. Yes. You do? I do know. I had this conversation right. earlier today. Like, what cities do you vibe This with? city, L.A. Really? Yes. And you live here? I live here. And Perfect. I love it. Me, and I, I don't like New York. I always vibe. I moved, I lived in New York twice. I grew up right outside of it. Everything in my life as a child was the New York orbit. My father worked in the city, drove into Manhattan every day. New York television, I still root for the New York sports teams. New York is always going to be in my blood, and there's a lot of love I have for it and many of the people there. But as soon as I moved out here, L.A. like sucked my dick on the first date. <laughs> I like <laughs> And he liked that, apparently. This well, is a good thing. metaphorically. <laughs> it had a great conversation with you, and then it sucked your dick. <laughs> then you were That's like, so I will true. live here. <laughs> no, that was way before I cared about a conversation. Okay. But it did. I mean, it just you just vibe with certain cities. I didn't vibe with New York, especially with the women. I always said they played playoff basketball, you know, play, like playoff defense. Like, you go into the lane, and they are going to slap that shit out of there. I mean, there are no layups with New York women, at least when I lived there, mm. twice. Once when I was younger and poorer, not doing that well. Once when I was in my 30s and was starting politically incorrect and was doing much better. It Same was horrible results. both times. Mm. I mean, New York women I just found to be, like, like I moved out here, and they're like the women, you know, they they just they just didn't give you a hard time. I mean, I didn't. You don't have to be easy, but just women in New York. I don't know. I, like they were just like I, I, maybe it was just me. It's the again. It's the whether you vibe. I know guys who love New York, but you had to be like more aggressive. I think there's a certain cycle that goes on in New York that the guys are so aggressive, like on the street, that the women have to like shut down. 
just to survive. Because the guys are like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> hey, hey, give me a smile. Yes. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> hey, I'm just, <laughs> what do you mean I'm blocking this? Ad? Hey, just, hey, what? Oh, you got a boyfriend? Why? You can't have any friends? I, I'll just be a friend. You know, like, they're, they're just, and I can't do that. That's <laughs> it just. Was very good just now. <laughs> <laughs> you brought it out in me. <laughs> but you know what? I'm sure guys have done that to you. Yes. I know New York is a great place to go for an ego boost. doesn't matter how you look or how you feel. You're going to get that energy. But maybe then, as a result of that, it caused the adver- adverse effect in women. This beautiful African-American woman I knew once told me, she said, you know, white guys, they approach me, and they're like, you know, and I don't want to have anything to do with them. And I... And I I say, I have a boyfriend, and they go away. Black guys, they go, well, you can't have any friends. (laughs) (laughs) It's facts. And I always wished I could be that guy. Yeah. You know, who had that, and I'm not, and I can't. So New York. So you're best suited to be the king. I'm the king. You're best suited to be the king. (laughs) I was not good as Lancelot. (laughs) That's Robert Goulet. Yeah. I'm the king. Yeah, and happy to be. Okay, so then let me ask two questions quickly then. Because you were a fierce masturbator, I'm trying to make a link. Does that mean now, do you enjoy hand jobs? Or because you perfected it on your own, it's very difficult for somebody to come in and do a great job with you? B. I think it's always interesting to ask. And then question number two I have then is then, when did your sex life start? And then when did it start to get as good as it is now? It's funny. I remember the first time I felt like with sex, oh, I got it. You know, yeah. just like because like anything else, sex is a ten thousand hour thing. Maybe it's not ten thousand hours, but it does, certainly doesn't come naturally. I'm sure it's ten thousand hours. That sounds accurate. Well, it's not. You know, I don't think it took me ten thousand hours. In fact, I know it didn't. But like, you were a fierce masturbator. That counts too. Those are no, hours you put in. But that's not sex. You don't think so? No. Of course. Well, it's well. I mean, it's a variety of sex. But you know, I I no, I wouldn't. I'd put it broadly, it's more like uh, actual sex than Dancing with the Stars, but I mean, it's not, you know, it's not sex. I mean, there's two fairly different things. Now, can they feed each other? Absolutely. Can they, you know, uh, and, or hinder each other? I mean, one of the uh, things you have to do as you get older is like, don't masturbate near any time you're having sex because you want to store up more chi. Mm. You know what I'm saying? As when you're younger, you masturbate before right. to get off Ex- so that you don't come too quickly with your right. partner. Yeah. Exactly. You understand everything, doctor. <laughs> I'm just <listening. laughs> it's, so, it's so great to talk to you. <laughs> you understand that you understand me. Thank you. Well, I'm sure I was going somewhere with that story, but I can't remember where it was. Well, no, you were. I would actually look. You said the first time that you felt like you got sex. Right. I was 24. 24. Oh, you peaked real early. Peaked? Well, 24 no. to first get. I feel like I first got sex no, for the I first time. No, I had sex too. when I was 16. But I feel like the first. And so now we're talking about eight years later. It was the first time I felt like, oh, now I know how to do it. That's what I'm talking about. What was different? You know, I, I can't, I don't know if I could put it into words. It's just like, like I was saying, with anything else that's a skill, partly a skill and partly accumulating experience and doing it enough times that's complicated, you just feel like uh, part of it is like learning how to hold back, <clears throat> you know, so you don't come too soon, right? And... Things like that. I don't know. I just felt like that that night. I, I felt, the first time I felt like, oh, okay, now I'm driving the boat here. Now I can dominate. Not in a bad way, dominate. Just as me, Tarzan, you, Jane. That's the basic nature of it. I mean, look, anybody can have any kind of permutation. Yes. And they do. But that's the basic default setting I have found. That's what they want. They don't want some fucking pussy passing out weak shit. And that's what you... You naturally attract partners who want, in the power play dynamic, you would attract people who would want the king. But isn't it... (laughs) So, if you had a different demeanor, you would attract the opposite, so... Yeah, you're probably right. I'm sure you're right, because you're the man. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, I'm the man. You're the doctor. (laughs) All right. 
I gotta <laughs> say goodbye to you. Okay, well, I let me ask a question I don't get to ask. A hundred attractive women in front of you. Oh, right. How many do you have sex with? I, I, I would have to talk to all of them. And then I bet I'm like the woman. Like I said, I've become more like a woman. It would be a very few number. It could be none. Because if you're, if I don't, if, if I don't want to also have lunch with you, you know, that's the, that's the acid test. Would I have lunch with this person? That is certainly something I never cared about or asked myself when I was 30. You know, it was never entered my mind. Would I actually want to have lunch with this person if I didn't want to fuck them? Lunch. Oh, they'll be gone by breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> what are we worrying about lunch for? <laughs> that was wonderful. Thank you. That was a joy. Such a joy. I love babies. Do you? No. I've never, <laughs> I've never touched a baby. The story you told about your mom baby. is exactly why I had kids. Because I want them to take me to my Robert Goulet's house one day. Oh,